The agroforestry, we can also, as well as thinking of it as um, providing a resilient agricultural system and adding in fruit and nuts as well as the, the field crops, we can also think of it from an energy point of view as well because the large-scale energy distribution systems that we have Again, despite huge advances in physics and so on, there is still an enormous loss of energy with large-scale grid networks and systems. Uh, things are improving. Clearly, we're using much more renewable energy. We're having more of these large international connectors, as they're called, to link up different national grid systems, so that particularly with renewable energy, uh, we can get a more even use and distribution of energy. But transmission of energy over large systems, there's an enormous loss. So the question is, can we decentralise energy production as well as food? And I think through agroforestry that is a possibility. And as you've already seen here on the farm, using, uh, in this case, mainly hazel and willow coppice, we can really quite easily, and we've been doing it for 10 years now, produce wood chips which go into, a, in fact, an Austrian wood chip boiler and provide all the hot water and central heating for the farm. And I think we can go much further than that. And I'm working with somebody in, in Wales where we have the idea, or he has the idea, the development of a very small scale combined heat and power unit. You can buy very large ones if you're prepared to pay a very large amount of money and have all the complications of finding fuel for such a big unit. What we're interested in is something on the single farm or group of houses level, particularly on this farm where we could use our own timber to operate small combined heat and power units so we would produce not only the heat for the central heating and hot water but electricity and of course if we're now thinking about electric vehicles electric tractors small scale electric machinery for other farming operations then uh, in fact they could be charged and run from the energy produced by the trees on the farm so it becomes a much more circular system and again by doing this on a small scale and if we think back to our small farms which are generating a diversity of food uh, they could also be generating their own energy. So that, that's the kind of overall target that, that we're trying to head for with these agroforestry systems. I mean, one of the real benefits of the agroforestry is the improvement in biodiversity. For instance, I mean, we've had volunteer bird surveys done and uh, it shows that we have as big a range of birds on the farm as in the whole of uh, what they call reference sites, which are about 10 times the size of this farm. So that, that's very encouraging. And uh, another guy doing a PhD at Reading University on bees, he was very excited to find that all the common bee species can be found here, <laughs> which is very nice to know. But all this diversity, uh, one thing that really amused me in, in thinking about it and looking at it was uh, at one stage I noticed that we seem to have a lot of new birds' nests uh, as the trees developed. 
And I thought, I really ought to have a look at this a bit more closely. And there were something like 15 birds' nests, which all look rather similar and distributed around the trees. So I checked which species of tree they were in, and they were only in two out of the available eight species, the small-leaved lime and the hornbeam. And that seemed rather interesting, and perhaps, I think, it was because of two things. One is that the canopies of those two trees were really quite large, so the camouflage effect, the cover effect, was very good and yet they're quite easy to fly in and out of. So those species canopies are better hiding places, let's say, than the other trees. But then I looked at the nests a bit more closely, realizing or having realized that they're actually all wood pigeon nests. And not only were they limited to two species of the trees, but the nests were all made out of Italian alder, a different species. <laughs> it was as if you know there'd been a big sale down at the local uh, DIY shop or something, <laughs> and they'd all picked up you know big bags of Italian alder to make their nests with. <laughs> um, but it was a very clear indication of the way in which it's not only us, but uh, you know other organisms in the in the whole system also make use of the biodiversity that's available. That was a kind of fun observation to make. One of the deficiencies of the system that we've got here is no livestock. I think the farming system would be much more efficient and potentially more profitable if we have livestock integrated with the crop production, the fuel production, etc. But that's partly because, you know, I was brought up as a plant scientist. I mean, I know about something about livestock and how to handle them to some extent, but I'm not a livestock person. So uh, my concentration has always been on the, the plant science aspect, which is a pity. We have had uh, a small chicken enterprise, Lisa, who you've met, uh, she ran chickens for a while for egg production, and that clearly showed how well it can work because the chickens just love the hedges in the alley cropping systems. So the idea of having mobile, ideally mobile units and an electric fence so you can move around uh, the different alleys is definitely a, a way to go. The problem we ran into principally was not enough investment in looking after the chickens particularly against the ravages of the local foxes who finished up eating the whole lot. They finished off the goose that lays the golden egg, <laughs> literally. Um, we have had, or do have now, another livestock enterprise, which is, a, I think, a very interesting one. I mean, it's, it's quite amusing in a way, but I think potentially quite important. And that is, there's a couple who live in Halesworth, which is one of our local towns, who have a small business called Truly Traceable. And what happens is that the husband, Steve, will go out very early in the morning with a rifle and knowledge of where to go, and he will shoot various things and take them back home for he and his wife to butcher and then turn into prize-winning pies and sausage rolls and so on. And one of those creatures is the muntjac. Now the muntjac is a small deer which was originally brought in as uh, an amusing animal to look at at Woburn Abbey, the Duke of Bedford's home. And that was at the beginning of the 20th century. But I think it was in something like 1911. 
23 of these animals escaped. And now there's, I don't know, 2 million <laughs> or something around the country, a huge number. And Steve, the guy with this small business, came and had a look at Wakelin's a couple of years ago now, I suppose. And he looked at the place. We gave him permission to shoot Munt Jack here. And he was delighted because he said that if he had some land and wanted to design a system to encourage Munt Jack, he would design it exactly like Wakelin's. <laughs> uh, so he's several times now, I don't know how many times because it's so early in the morning, I don't know when he comes, but he comes and shoots Munt Jack. And then if you order sausage rolls, I mean really delicious sausage rolls, and we had some a couple of months ago which were not only made with the Munt Jack shot here, uh, but the, the pastry around the sausage roll was actually made with the Wakelin's YQ wholemeal flour. <laughs> they, they really were delicious. But the nice thing is, it comes as a bit of a shock for some people. If uh, Steve delivers an order of these things to somebody, uh, the order comes together with two photographs. One of the animal just after it had been shot, and a second of the Google map of exactly where the animal was shot. So that's the truly traceable. You know exactly where that animal came from. And you know that, you know, there haven't been any vets, no medicines. The animals lived a wonderful life <laughs> until the point when uh, its number was on a particular bullet. You know, that's a, a very interesting way of <laughs> developing a livestock enterprise, which one can do under agroforestry. Okay. <laughs> they were delicious. <laughs>